Easy guys, what's up? Welcome back to a brand new tutorial and today we are starting up a new series. We are taking a look at sound designing uh, stuff for video games, movies, whatever it might be. And today we're kicking things off with explosions and we will be taking a look at this sound right here. Right, it's a, a, an explosion, it's very simple stuff. Um, and it's quite approachable as well. So uh, we are gonna take a look at this sound and we're gonna start by breaking it up into three different parts. We've got the transient, the body and tail. Any uh, sound that's uh, percussive or starts very suddenly and ends very suddenly, generally speaking, has these three different parts. The transients, which are the clicks. You got the body, which is the main thing that you listen to. And then you've got a tail, which is just basically the remnants of the body, right? Obviously here, the uh, because of the way I treated the actual body, the body actually has a tail to it, but uh, we've also have like a, a layer for the tail so we can actually shape the sounds a bit, uh, the actual tail a bit better. So I'm gonna turn off all the effects and then we're gonna be taking a look at everything that I've done. Okay, so we're back now and let's take a look at the samples individually. So we start off by uh, using this slow click. By the way, all these samples are things that I've just recorded around my house using my Zoom. You can also use your phone to record these sounds. It's very basic stuff. It's like uh, it's me banging on random objects that I found around the house. You know, stuff like this. Knife hits as well. It's just like basic, basic stuff. It's not anything special. It's like things that you can find around the house. You can just record them with your phone or something like that. Do some minimal EQing, and you probably be good to go. So this is the the first transient. I think it's me just uh, hitting something that was made out of plastic. This is just me hitting something that's a bit more woody or papery. I don't quite remember. Um, and then I've got this top layer that is a bit crunchier. So for the transients, what you want to keep in mind is you want to have something that's a bit higher frequency oriented, generally speaking, and uh, something that is uh, very sharp and quick. And one thing about that you'll notice about these transients and the body and the way that the overall explosion is laid out is that I don't stack everything at the beginning. I let the explosion have some cadence to it. So basically what makes this an explosion quite satisfying is how the, the whole thing plays out over time. It's the uh, some sort of like anticipation, but not instant release that then leads to a bigger release. Uh, is what really gives us some sort of satisfaction when hearing an explosion in, let's say, video games or whatever it might be. Um, it's a bit of a weird thing. So, hearing all of these in context, sounds like this. It's, more, it's like a pre-shifted clack. And adding up all the effects, I've separated each one of these little transients by a frequency region. You know, and they, they kind of sound, they kind of give it away by the way that the sound, particularly this last one. But adding the effects, this is how all transient sounds like. So I've got a high pass on this first one. So we've got a very high energy click. And then I've got a mid, mid range um, transient here. So I've got some OTT to crunch everything together and bring the mids a bit higher. And then I've got some filtering going on. This is how it sounds. So I've got this mid range and then the lower part of the transient, right? So then I have a saturator and a maximizer compressor uh, just bringing everything together, just gluing everything together. So this is our initial transient. After that, we've got the body. So the body is a bit more interesting because I've used a bunch of stuff here. So this is me uh, closing my microwave, I believe. 
This is me dragging a chair. And this here is just me hitting my, my bathtub. So, the, these are things that you can record, literally in your kitchen, in your, in your bathroom, and get a cool explosion sound out of it. So, for the processing here, I've picked a little bit of a frequency range for every single part. So the the microwave closing I've used for the top layer of the body. Um, for the mid range, I've used the chair dragging. I think this is me dragging a chair. It's me dragging something. I don't remember what it was. So I've got this little stereo-ish mid band, and then I've got actually. Do I have? Yeah, I still have the MOS effects, but. There's just compression, a little bit of distortion. And then for the body, I've got this. So if I turn on all these effects, this is how it sounds, right? So uh, the the effects that I'm doing here, basically I've got some heavy distortion uh, getting fed into this. Then I've got a disperser, so I can really have the low end emphasized, particularly the, the, the sub frequencies. Because what disperser does is changes uh, when something should appear in time. So basically, the, what this curve here means is how much are we delaying the frequencies before they actually appear. So basically, the higher frequencies, as you can see, are appearing instantly as soon as the sound comes through, but the lower frequencies are delayed and therefore isolated, which allow us to perceive them a bit better and gives us the idea that the sound is actually far deeper than what it is. Uh, the disperser also has a, a different effect, which is it reduces the peak to body ratio. Um, so the difference between the actual peak and transient of the body uh, of the, the sound and the actual body of the sound, uh, the difference between the transient and the body gets diminished and therefore the sound sounds a bit more compressed without actually being compressed, um, which makes the sound a lot more stable and a lot easier to process as well. So uh, looking at this parallel chain, I've got the dry signal going through, right? This is how it sounds. And then I've got a reverb and noise layer. So basically all I'm doing here uh, is basically using reverb to delay the signal over time ring modulated with low pass noise using the ring modulator by kilohertz and the reason i use this is because a it's an inc inc incredibly efficient um, like ring modulator i just slap it on do what i want and i'm done with it it's really quick to use and uh the the reason i decided to ring modulate this whole layer is because i wanted to have some low frequency rumble you know when explosions happen and you've got that little droney sound just like yeah, math sounds. Anyway, um, and then I just reverb that again so I can have a bit more longevity out of that. There we go. Uh, alternatively, if I really wanted to make this huge, I could always do this, right? And let's just leave it on for the time being as it is. And this is how the whole body sounds. Oh, yeah, I need to install this. There you go. Right, and then looking at the tail, what we have going on is simply a little clicky thing, and then this. This is me banging on something again, but I don't quite remember what it was. So I basically just low pass it, so I can have this tail this percussive tail can actually make it larger as well. So now that we have the tail, we've got this little detail here that kind of complements the body of the explosion. That's just why I added it. it. It's not really necessary. This is literally just a detail layer. So now that we've got everything done, right? Uh, it's about time to look at the master effects. This is how the whole thing sounds like. There you go. Sounds a bit like a gunshot. But after the effects, you probably... There we go. So what I'm doing here is a, I'm compressing the living hell out of the whole sound uh, using multiband compression. So as you can see, the thresholds here are relatively low. Um, and I'm cutting a lot of the higher frequencies because the transient was a bit too poppy. 
but I like the way it sounded uh, by itself. But I, uh, in context, it sounded just a little bit too poppy. And instead of just changing the whole thing, I just decided to compress everything to make it easier and still have that loud click in the beginning as if it's like a trigger for the explosion. And then I have a very compressed but boosted low end. Uh, and the reason I have the, the low end quite boosted is because I'm using distortion right afterwards. So I really wanted to make the body pop with the uh, with the actual compression and distortion. Uh, the mid range is just being compressed. Uh, nothing more is really happening there. I then have distortion. So I'm using Denise Punisher because it's an easy, quick and very strong distortion. Um, for more detailed explosions, I would definitely recommend using something a bit more elaborate, like uh, Trash, for example, by Isotope. Um, and if you want to get some weird, like, uh, bitey textures, I'd say Tantra is also pretty nice. But definitely take a look at uh, Trash 2 for this particular purpose, because it's going to allow you to do a lot more things from the convolution aspect, uh, the convolution possibilities inside the trash itself, um, which are always nice to give the sound a, a little bit more texture. Uh, so let's say, for example, do this, and let's just turn on the distortion and see what it's like. There we go, and it's like just like that, we can do like a a submarine shooting a something like a or we can make uh, all sorts of weird textures and just in we're not even using distortion yet so something like that for example and you can just spend time and time just tweaking distortion and con and convolution units to, like completely change your, your explosion uh, so uh, we can then just compress everything and just do a little bit of a cleanup. So I'm boosting the low end just very slightly and cutting the staring information to clean up everything, taking out some of the mids here, just so I can make sure that the low end is unchallenged to an extent and just placing the reverb a little bit, uh, the explosion a little bit far away by cutting some of the higher frequencies. So that's how you can go about making an explosion. All you need to really know is you break it down into three parts, uh, transient, body, and tail. Transient, transient needs to be loud, but has some cadence to it. The explosion can be, explosion itself, the, the body itself can be a bit more tight together, but make sure you pronounce the low end and you make the whole thing just descend in frequency range. And then for the tail, we can add a little bit of, uh, of some details and some rumble using ring modulation, for example. Uh, the bus processing when it comes to explosions uh, is definitely key. The samples themselves can be manipulated to any to like for days, so it doesn't really matter. As long as they are, to an extent, adequate, you can make an explosion uh, out of any sample that you choose. But the bus processing really is important. And the balancing of the frequency range particularly to the low end and the way that you make the whole sound go from high frequency to lower frequency will definitely change the way the explosion is perceived because the quicker the explosion the smaller it is right generally speaking if something if an explosion is very large you will not just hear the explosion itself you also will hear the gradual damage that it does of the things around it um so the the overall frequency balance of everything and the cadence is incredibly important to determine what kind of explosion we are dealing with. Uh, then, as I said, if you boost the low ends and take out some of the highs, that will help place your uh, explosion in your mix, whatever, whatever it might be, like the circumstance. Um, and using distortion after a lot of compression is a very easy and quick way of having that low end extremely extremely pronounced. So compression, distortion, and EQing will definitely be very helpful, especially with placement. And yeah, that's been the tutorial, guys. I hope it was useful in any way, shape, or form. I, If you guys have any questions, just leave them down in the comments. And if you're interested in game audio, make sure you join my, the Discord server that I'm, at, I'm in. Uh, the link will be down in the description, and I'd love to see you there. 
And thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.